Hey, hey happy campers. campers! Welcome back to Camp Shady Bird. Ooh, I love that. I'm in my country twang era. It is episode thirty six. I was that episode. Six. It is episode thirty six. Era Camp Shady Bird. Episode thirty six, and God willing, we'll be here for thirty six more campers. I can't believe it. I can't believe it's not butter. Um, and I have to be honest with everybody here, right here, right now. Yeah, we. What we, you need to let the campers at Camp Shady Bird know. We weren't we, we weren't together this weekend, you guys. We were separate um, for the first time in a long time. We're together twenty four seven. We were separated, not by choice. Jonathan was on a little trip. If you remember last week's episode, Jonathan, break it down for everybody. Where'd you go? Why were you there? What happened? So I was on a bachelor trip. My friend John Anthony is getting married. Congratulations, John Anthony and Samantha. And um, we were in Ocean City, Maryland. And if you didn't listen to the last episode where I briefly touched on this. Um, the house that we had rented, I hadn't seen any pictures. I hadn't seen anything. I looked it up on Zillow. There was a street view picture. So I was a little panicked. I was like, okay, how is this going to, how is this going to go? Um, and something that was unique about the house was that there were no linens that I was told in a group chat that there were no linens, there were no towels. It was BYOT and all of that jazz. So I'm really nervous to see what this house is going to look like and what else there isn't, but I'm going in with an open mind. Okay. This party's not about me. So we show up. The house is nice. It was like two houses, like a ranch style house and then a barbecue style house. I'm just kidding. Um, And then like a taller house that were like sandwiched together. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of stairs. We'll circle back to that. But we get in the house just as suspected. Not a single thread count in sight. Um, We did bring our linens, which I still don't understand why they did. Like the house was nice. I was waiting for it to be like in shambles or something. Um, the first floor was like big bedrooms, big bedrooms. You get to the top floor and in one room, it's like six twin beds all in a row. I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to stay here. I like the movie Madeline. I could, I could fuck with this <laughs> heavy. Wait, I love, oh my God. I love that little French girl. <laughs> and that's what her. we did. We all woke up in the morning and we got in our two lines and we ran through the, through the streets of France. I wonder if my parents knew I was gay when I was growing up. Cause I was like, mom, put on Madeline. And my brother was like, can I go play outside? I'm like, no, one more episode. Do you remember when they made the live action Madeline? Yes. That was a real treat for a young gay like I was. I don't think I ever saw that one. You missed out. I loved that. What do you think she would be up to now? What would Madeline be doing? Madeline works in an art gallery. Yeah. And she Mm -hmm. she doesn't have a boyfriend and it's by choice. She she's the talk of the town. Everybody wants to queer. She is queer presenting for sure. <laughs> oh, she, yeah. So we're not really sure if it, it, it's in her bones, but she definitely is friends with the LGBTQ pli- pli- <laughs> IA plus community. Madeline is definitely a feminist. Yeah. Definitely queer friendly. Madeline's a girl you can trust. She always has been. Yeah. And she's really good with her money. Yeah. She's good with her money. She's not super duper trustworthy with plans though. Like you're going to make plans with that girl and she's going to be like, I totally forgot. Sorry. I'm um, on top of a building. Somehow I shimmied up the side of it and I'm really just getting into shenanigans. Can we just reschedule our hangout session until tomorrow? I think you've confused Madeline with Spider-Man and I think that's, that's the thing that's exciting. Wait, let's go back to you here. Let's wait. What is what is I need? I have questions beyond the house. Okay? Yes. What is Ocean City, Maryland's land? I've never been to Ocean City, Maryland before. What is it? Um, it's kind of like the Jersey Shore, just a little bit further. It's it's beachy. Who wrote the note? You two. <laughs> you two. Um, it was nice. It was we were right on the beach. There was it's off season though, so a lot. It's of, a beach town. It's a beach town. Thank you. A lot of a lot of closed businesses though, because again. We're in the off season. It was kind of like purgatory a bit. I don't know. Is May the off season for the beach? The sun's out. It was 85 and balmy the other week. Well, yeah. A lot of the places weren't going to be open until after. Um, but the Crab Shacks? What's that holiday? Memorial, Memorial Day. Day. Oh, how ironic that I forget Memorial. Sorry about that. <laughs> so after Memorial Day is when everything's open. But yeah, no, we had fun. We just filled every day with drinking. I did a lot of beer bongs. Haven't done that since college. What is a beer bong? You always say that, and I feel like I feel stupid. <gasps> you don't know what a beer bong is? I guess I don't. Is that just when you like when you just like like you, it's like a funnel. You it's like a funnel oh, attached I, to a plastic tube. I think this is something that we always have an issue with with location and regionality. What I did think you call they it? Like, oh, it's funnel a beer. Funnel a beer. Yeah. Is that beer different bong? than a beer bong? No, you, you, yeah, no, it's the same thing. And yours makes more sense. Ours, it said it on the, on the little thing. It said beer bong. We purchased it. We smoke it? 
No, I don't know why it's called a beer bong. I was just, that's why I was asking. I funneled a beer. Yes, in my day, I have funneled quite a few. It does. Have you ever butt chugged? I don't even want to know what a butt chug is. Okay, well, Google it. <laughs> <laughs> but we did a lot of that. It was a lot of, have you ever gone? Okay, uh, one of my favorite pastimes at a beach town. What? Drinking heavily and then going shopping at the gift shop for things you don't need. You'll do that in your hometown. Amen, sister. I bought a mug that said Gladys for John Anthony and he happily sipped out of it for the entire weekend. That's I funny. also got a friendship bracelet with Mark. It's a little, it's like puka shells with a shark tooth on it. Had to take it off because I slept with it on and the shark tooth did cut my um cut my little wrist here. Um, we went to this place called Secrets, which was a lot of fun. It was like an indoor slash outdoor place. I met some campers that were there who came up. <gasps> that was cool. Come on, Maryland represent. Come on, Shady Bridge campers in Maryland. Yeah, and then, oh, let me tell you one other thing. I don't know why it was brought, but smelling salts. I think one time I showed my friends poppers and they really liked it. So I think they thought it would be the same experience. It's not. It's for athletes who get like hit in the head and knocked out. I don't know exactly what it's for. It's basically it's straight for up. It's for athletes when they get when they get it they get concussed. Yeah. They smell it and it brings them back to life. Listen, smelling salts are the nasty, nasty cousin of um wasabi <laughs> oh my god you're right it is like wasabi it's like somewhere between wasabi and poppers yeah that's really interesting one time i was at kira's house and her boyfriend opened up a bottle of smelling salts and said smell this and i didn't even question it. i was like what is that and i put my, i put my little nostrils right up to that thing no. i almost my head flew back 100 miles an hour I basically floated into the sky. Like if yeah. you pass out, that'll wake you up. Well, John doesn't. He he does that. He's he, an he's athletic not, trainer. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why he brought that in. But it's not the same thing as poppers. All that to say, guys. All that to say. And you know then, who, what, who? You know who would know what poppers is? Who? Madeline. Madeline. <laughs> moving moving forward. <laughs> Madeline has a line of boutique poppers. Oh, puppies. Puppies. <laughs> puppies. <laughs> Uh, and then the last day we're getting pa we're packing up, we're getting ready to go home. I am severely hungover. So I'm just telling myself, take it one step at a time, as the American poet Jordan Sparks told us. Oh, love her. So I'm taking it one step at, step at a time. I'm bringing my luggage down the flight of stairs and I don't make it past the top stair because I fall down the entire flight of stairs. Mm -hmm, you do. It was very loud and the house got very quiet and I just heard from upstairs, hello? <laughs> it was like... <laughs> like the grape stomping woman. I'm on the ground. I'm rolling around. I'm like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh they, they came to my rescue, but I was just not having it. I was like, I need a minute. I need a minute. Uh, I have a bruise on my ass the size of Texas, and it is also the shape of Texas. I am uncomfortably sitting like this. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, this chair is actually the most comfortable chair that I've been sitting in. I've had to be on my stomach. I had to take the the car. We were driving back three hours, and then f from PA to New York was another two and a half hours. So I think that did not help with the bruising. I just took a gander at your cheeks, and it looks like someone drew Australia with a black Sharpie on mm -hmm. your butt. And I think you should just get it tattooed. You, yeah, you really, hey, what's that? Something, what's that? Scarlet takes a tumble? Scarlet takes a tumble. Jonathan took a tumble down those stairs. It was. Are you okay? It was awful. I was just checking to see if the gravity works, and it did. I am okay. I'm going to complain about it for about a week, and you just have to get used to it. Maybe I'll put a picture of it on Patreon. <laughs> Yeah, you should. Okay. Hey guys, yeah, that'll get some of those. That'll get some of those thirsty I campers. I can't. I can't promise. Come it. on, Papa's got to pay some bills. Oh, God. <laughs> Only fans. I'm just joking. Wait, but I will say our last episode on uh, Patreon. Oh that was. Can I talk about that? Uh, please. So we posted. So the other night, Jonathan and I got drunk at the bar. Whatever. I'm not gonna apologize anymore. And I was like, we should like, we were like, we should do a Patreon episode because you've been, Jonathan's been dying to do Patreon after dark where we get drunk and we just do like a little like segment. So we got drunk at the bar and then bought a bottle of wine and <laughs> drank that as we looked up a list of fuck, Mary kill. And it got so rowdy and funny and people loved it. People, people did. Yeah. I was nervous if he took it a little too far. And we, we certainly did. Um, one girl commented, it was the last comment. I, I, I had the screenshot on my phone, but recording the phone. I'm so sorry if I don't have your name, but your comment was hysterical. It was like someone once asked me, um, if I would, it was like, if I would have sex with, um, Ryan Gosling and she's like, I would never. And then she was like, I would have sex with 200 people before Ryan Gosling. And then her friend said, 
do it then like or like name it so she spent the rest of her night writing 200 celebrities that she would rather have sex with over ryan gosling and i think that kind of dedication to your bit is so incredible and i would love to read that list <laughs> um yeah but that episode was really really funny yeah, patrons it was, are popping off it has been it's been a lot of fun and we are going to be going to vegas tomorrow did i say that correctly jonathan do you guys hear that say it again for everybody vegas Okay, so some of the campers will know, and I have an accent. I'm from Massachusetts. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not shitting on you, but I'm just saying. You say. You say Vegas, and Vegas. you say bagel. Bagel. Vegas and bagel. Vegas and bagel, and it's. I would say Vegas and bagel, but you say Vegas and bagel. Vegas. So we're gonna go to Vegas, and we're gonna get a bagel. Why is it never Las Vegas? Las Vegas. Last Vegas. It's just too many. I don't have time for the extra syllable. Oh yeah, the one syllable. All that to say, we are gonna be vlogging while we're there, and that's gonna be on Patreon. Um, probably like right when we get back. Okay, come on, editing queen. Mm -hmm. We Twitter are seeing too. that Katy Perry show you we were talking about weeks ago, guys. It's finally here. We're flights tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be a good time. Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Welcome back to morning announcements. Attention campers, due to my injuries, I will be having fellow camp staff member Nadine lead you in the hiking, which is interesting because she only has one leg, but um, she could probably do a better job with that than I could with my butt. For campers that don't know, Nadine is the ex-wife of Bear Grylls. And she taught Bear everything he's ever known. Who's that? Bear Grylls? I don't know her you marriage don't history. You don't know who Bear Grylls is? It sounds like you're making it up. Ba okay. There's going to be cameras out here being like, what the hell? Bear Grylls is like the go-to of like survivalists in the wilderness. You remember his show? He used to like cut a salmon head off and, and like slug out the insides. Ew. You would have... When we Wait, were like teenagers. Is that the guy who did the thing with the camel where he was in the desert and he like carved out the inside of a camel and he lived inside of it. It sounds of his nature. I, if that's the guy that lives in my head, unfortunately, because I just remember there was undigested straw and he was drinking the liquid okay, that was well, in there. Let's just save some of the details for PETA to use for their campaign. Nadine's a freak. Nadine is a freak. So good luck guys. I'm not going on that trip because <laughs> I will be doing the sewing circle. We so, love that. Yeah, so if you're not into hiking, you can always do Sewing Circle with me. We do have a little bit of housekeeping before we get into today's show. I'll start. The pasta mystery from last week has been solved, mm. everybody. We had a couple theories kind of rolling around Camp Shady Birch. We spoke about it at our Kumbaya in the morning last week. But we did find out that the man... The reason why the pasta was dumped was because a man was cleaning out... Oh, wait, I should backtrack. If you didn't miss, if you missed the episode last week, uh, basically 500 pounds of cooked pasta ended up in the woods in the middle of New Jersey and no one knew why. So they figured out why. That's what I'm trying to say. The pasta was by a man whose parents had died and he was cleaning out their house and they had been stockpiling because old people love to stockpile food. Plus COVID, it really heightened their stockpile and he didn't know what to do with all this food. So he actually threw it dry into... The woods, but the weather in New Jersey with the rain and the humidity apparently had cooked the pasta. What? I I have a hard time believing that, but that's what that's what big big news is trying to tell us. Well, I do feel like I can believe that because it's really just soggy, and I guess like if you want to speed up that process, yeah. that's why you boil the pasta. But leave. Maybe we should do an experiment. Yeah, we should put some water. We should just like we should put some spaghetti in the bottom of the shower, put the water on for a couple minutes. I'm sure it would soggy up. Yeah, probably. It just takes a while, but it makes sense if it's out there. I don't know if I'm believing that though. Can I tell you something really embarrassing that just hit my head? What? I was like 12 years old we at my friend Dylan's house and it was really hot one day. <laughs> I can't. So stupid. It was so hot one day and we were like, oh, we could crack it. We could, we could cook an egg on the pavement. <laughs> we took an egg from the kid. <laughs> we took an egg and we cracked it in his driveway and I just ran into the grass <laughs> and his mom was out the window and she was smoking a cigarette and she went, hey, knock it off. It's on my eggs. And it didn't even cook. Oh, no. You could probably cook an egg on, like, in a dashboard of a car because that's going to be hotter, right? I don't know. I was so embarrassed because it was really my idea. <laughs> Everyone just wanted to play, like, video games or go play through football. And I was like, guys, stop. I have a great idea. 
We're going to make scrambled eggs on the grass. Yeah, I saw it on Looney Tunes once. No, it does. I have seen it. We could do that in Vegas. We can do it. In, we could do, <laughs> you know, we could do. We could toast a bagel in Vegas. Oh, uh, we could toast a bagel in Vegas and put, make a bacon and cheese. Okay, anyway, <laughs> so the pasta and apparently, and once again, is this even true? I'm giving this information here. Someone said in an article, I don't know if it was real or not. I may have made this up. They said that the, they, the, when the cops found out who it was, they felt really bad. So they didn't even press charges because they were like, this is sad. Oh, I wonder if it, yeah, interesting. But I'm like, well, you don't have to press charges, but you should at least be like, hey, don't do that. Yeah, and maybe they did. It might have been someone, I don't know. They were like, oh, that why was a sad you, instance. Why wouldn't you donate that? Some like, people are like, oh, the birds will eat it. <laughs> the, do birds like pasta like that? So did you guys, hey, 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 did you guys know that you can't feed birds bread? Is that true? Remember I got in trouble? I got in trouble for doing that. I did a Duncan ad way back in the day. This was like 2020. And I, my bit was I was going to go like, I was late, 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 late to this important date. And it was just throw, just to give bre birds bread. And I got flooded with these comments being like, you can't feed birds bread because it expands in their stomach and it can kill them. You're supposed to feed them like almost like raw like like corn and like and carrots and like vegetables like that oh. or like bird feed or like just don't feed them and i didn't know that but i just feel like what what a twist of fate because my entire life i've just i've always romanticized elderly people giving birds a little bit of bread but you shouldn't do that uh, unless you let it sit out in the rain in new jersey and then it'll it'll soak up all the sop because i feel like wet bread wouldn't expand but i feel like wet pasta might well, we don't I, know, guys. We don't know the intentions, but he's not in trouble. And that's the story. I don't know if I buy all of it. I'm really uncomfortable. I don't know if it's from the, the content of the story you just told or if it's the big bruise on my asshole. But all that to say, I have one <laughs> little housekeeping. It's not housekeeping. Just a follow up. Shout out to my friend April, who so kindly did go out and get us massive amounts of those M&Ms that we've been craving. Um, if you don't know. I'm going to say it again. It's like a white chocolate, marshmallow, rice crispy treat deal in an M&M. They're so good. They're not selling them anymore, but we got our hands on quite a bunch of them. Yeah, we have so many and they're 100, they're 450 calories for the entire package. So I've been eating them because I said on the, I said on the Patreon, anything under 500 calories is not real. You guys always remember that. And i um, really thankful for April. I also did go on the MMs.com and knows that a couple campers did go on there and write reviews. <laughs> yeah. My review has 14 likes on it. I think it's probably a record for MM.com. So I'm feeling really impressive as we speak. But yeah, maybe we fought for a good cause. And did we win? Probably not. But you know what? Our voices were heard, and that's all that matters. When I fell down the stairs, there were two packs of the M&Ms in my backpack, oh, no. and I fell back on my back, and they just exploded all on the inside of my book bag. So we'll put them in a batch of our homemade Rice Krispie treats that we will be serving down at the mess hall. Mm -mm. So don't miss that next Tuesday, guys. Make sure you get your little crispy treats from the rest hall. Love that. Love the rest hall. Uh, okay, so morning. <laughs> you did. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, morning announcement. Morning announcement. Do you want to do your story first? Why don't you go first this time? God, I'm so nervous. I don't know. What's your announcement? This is the news of the part of the show where we feel like we should share some information for you, for you, with you, for you, and with you that we feel like you might have missed. Okay, I'm not CNN, but I am Zachariah. And they're two in the same. Jonathan, please. <laughs> okay, so this article is coming from UPI, which I've used a lot. And um, the author is Ben Hooper. And he's been to, is it Ben Hooper or Ben Hopper? Oh, Christ, I should look it up. But uh, but he's definitely hooked us up with a lot of stories, at least the ones that I've been covering. So shout out to Ben. This one's titled, Minnesota Man Invents Beer-Powered Motorcycle. I saw this. Explain. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So this guy, his name is Kai Michelson, and he's from Bloomington, Minnesota. Heard of that place, honestly. I've heard of Bloomington. Go Bulldogs. Um, so he <laughs> actually, he, he is, I don't know. This isn't his first time at the rodeo, baby. He's, he's invented other things before, like a rocket-powered toilet. Uh, no. I, I've got questions <laughs> about that. He's got answers. And a jet-powered coffee pot. 
Okay, and this is what? It's a beer-powered and motorcycle? this is a beer-powered motorcycle, yes. He loves to put two and two together. He, you know, his brain works in mysterious ways, I guess. So the <laughs> beer-powered motorcycle he created in his Bloomington garage has a 14-gallon keg with a heating coil instead of a gas-powered engine. And I love this because gas prices are through the roof, while beer prices remain the same. <laughs> the coil actually not in this economy let's be honest the coil heats the beer up to 300 degrees Ew, fahrenheit bro. oh well i guess I know. you need to get hot makes yeah. cars go that's all i know <laughs> and yeah. that's and that's it for this podcast <laughs> ever felt the hood of a car after it's been running yeah it's not cold that's not <laughs> you're right hot makes car go <laughs> so <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so he heats it up to 300 degrees, which then becomes a superheated steam in the nozzles that propel the bike forward, a.k.a. hot makes car go. Uh, he also has this quote, which I love, quote, the price of gas is getting up there. I don't drink. I'm not a drinker. So I can't think of anything better than to use it for fuel, Michelson said. So essentially, you can probably just use any liquid. He's just like being a, being a headline grabber and doing beer. But I don't know. I feel like a lot of beer is really cheap. Another suggestion he could do, use the neighbor's hose and have them pay for the water. And then you're just using water. Yeah, but this is the other thing, too. How many miles per gallon are we talking? Is it really cheaper? How far can this thing go? How fast can it go? You can't so go 85 he, on the left lane on Bud Light. He suspected, hold on, I did not write it down, but it's definitely in this article. He has yet to test it out on like an open, um, like an, an open track where he can go as fast as he can without being pulled over, which he has done in the past with his other inventions. Where is it? The rocket toilet, of course. The rocket toilet. Yeah, just doing that in public for everyone to see. Okay, he says... He believes that the bike will be able to reach a speed of 150 miles per hour if given the chance to do it on a track and test it out. I believe I could be a flyer for a cheerleading team, but we both come on the base. So well, I don't know. Well, we can believe a lot of things. doesn't mean they're true. I mean, right. Well, that's what he's hoping, that he'll be able to give it a little test to ruin that I'm sure he's going to get a Guinness Book World Record. I'm sure he's already in there with all these little inventions. Yeah, he probably is. Well, congrats. I love I love an entrepreneur. I love a man who can, who can make a, a two-part series with some hot beer. Um, I love that. Good for him. Quick question before we move on to yours. What would you use instead of beer or water? I would use whiskey. Oh, my God. Because I hate, I hate, hate, hate brown liquor. It's not very economical. You're going to be spending a pretty penny. Well, you didn't ask me about the way it would work. You just asked me what liquid I would use. And to me, it doesn't matter. I'm never going to drink it. So I'm not going to say something I like, like sour cream. Or Yoohoo. Well, you who sucks. Chocolate drink. Chocolate water. Yeah. Gross. You know who really cracked the code on chocolate milk? Nesquik. Nesquik. They knew what they were doing all along. And their packaging is silly, and I love that silly little rabbit. That silly little rabbit. Nesquik is for kids. Do you want to say what you're going to put instead of um, beer? I, I would do water from my neighbor's hose. I think oh, that would work. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, smart. Because um, that's, I don't know, it's just the cheapest thing I can think of. We're like, yeah, collect rainwater. But if I'm feeling like crazy, freaky, and silly, probably uh, the blood of my enemy. Nice. Okay. So what's your story? <laughs> Okay, well, um, my story is definitely in the same universe because it is on this planet. Uh, missing woman survived five days in Australia wilderness. Oh, my God, like your ass. Um, thanks to lollipops and a bottle of wine before being rescued, authorities said. I love how things end with authorities said. Yeah, because are these authorities? They're like, we don't know if this is true. Don't sue us if it's not. The cops told us. Listen, 48-year-old woman, Lillian, went on vacation to Bright Australia. Her family was soon alarmed after she didn't make her daily call to check in with loved ones. Five days later, police said there was an air wing, which is like a plane with a camera, spotted Lillian's car at the end of a dirt road in the Mita Mita bushland, about 60 kilometers from the nearest town on Thursday. Do you know how far 60 kilometers is miles? 150 miles an hour. Mm, okay. Um, I did the math for everybody else. 37 miles away from the, the from nearest bright. from the nearest town. That went from bright to dark real quick. She was on her way to go visit the Dartmouth Dam. As a former Dartmouth Indian, I can relate. When she realized she had taken a wrong turn, according to police. 
Perlis, police, police from Perth. That was silly. Perth, Australia. Never mind. Her car got bogged down. I love that. No, I don't. But I like the word bogged. Sorry. Her <laughs> like, I love that. No, Her I, car got bogged down. I, I fucking love that. I'm a sucker for an adjective, and that's what I meant. Her car got bogged down in mud and without a cell signal. She had no way to call for help. This is actually a nightmare. So she goes to this dam to go visit for a little like solo trip in Australia. Oh. She gets stuck in the mud on this dirt road, can't get her car out of it. And also, guys, because of a previous illness, we're not really sure what it is because she's a private person. Oh. She has a hard time with her mobility. Oh, no. So she's 37 miles away from the nearest town with no cell service and her car's stuck in the mud. Oh, my God. So five days go by, guys, before the cops finally find her in their camera. That's uh, a full, like, Monday through Friday. Uh, hey, it was a Monday through Friday. Um, but she only brought on this trip to this dam some snacks and some lollipops for food. And she didn't bring any water. But in her car, she did have a bottle of wine. But Lillian doesn't drink. The bottle of wine was a gift for her mother. But oh. what could you do? She oh. had to open that classic. It would probably be a Sauvignon Blanc. I, I was, it's probably Yellowtail. Yeah, it's got to be Yellowtail. Um, yeah, so she sipped on some wine, just some uh, some lollies and some snacks. Um, and then the cops said that she used greater sense because by staying with the car, it made it easier for her to find because if she were to wander out into the wilderness, she never would have made it based on her health. Yeah. So all this to say is Lillian has been reunited with her family. She's all good. Happy ending for everybody. Okay, so she didn't know like, no damage was done to her body like she's good no she's actually getting an hbo special with the guy who survived on ketchup packets in the water they're gonna team up and say remember that episode yeah come on that was my story they're in the same universe if you guys go you guys know what oh, would fuck. you want as your little treats in the um in the car to survive yeah, for five days as you were saying that i was like oh my god we should put like a we should put together a little pack like a first aid kit but in case we crash or get stuck or bogged down, if you will. First of all, I'm never going off-roading 37 miles away from a town. I go to the gas station, the mall, and back home. I door dash a lot, you guys. Well, what if the road is muddy? I've never been off-roading in my life. Car can break down. I've been on the cobblestones. Yeah, Anyways, you all have. this to say is... Um, what would I put in it? Definitely water. Always a smart choice. Um, Probably... Oh, I like the, the Belvita cracker things they give you four hours of energy or so it claims i think those are the ones the blueberry ones you know what i'm talking about yeah, they taste those, like the compact in my molars to the point where they're, they're like caked in there they certainly are but that's a little snack for later if you're stuck for five days you gotta have something caked in the back of your teeth that's why it works for four hours because you're picking that out of your gums for four yeah. hours maybe like a um what is that? Like a liquid IV type thing to keep the hydration in the body? That's actually kind of smart. I like I that. I know. And then uh, like extra batteries from a Game Boy, I guess. Mm, okay. What I, about you? I recently just purchased a pack at my local grocer um, of Sour Patch Watermelon this weekend. Oh. When was the last time you visited down that road? Uh, it's been quite some time, but I do enjoy. I will say that's a sister you can trust. Yeah. A Sour Patch Watermelon, morning, noon, or night, is never going to let you down. Mm -hmm. She's consistent. She's sweet. She's spicy. She's sour. She's a girl I love. Yeah. So Those I'd, are have, good. I'd have her. I'd maybe some yellow Gatorade. Yeah. Come on, Miley. Water and uh, an Italian sub, but they got to- <laughs> An Italian sub. Whoa. By the time you open it, it's gonna be like moldy and nasty. Listen, I, there's never been an Italian sub in my radius that hasn't lasted more than five minutes, okay? You know, you know what you could do? That's true. Astronaut food. Yes. Italian sub. dehydrate it. Ew! Oh, we should try that We with a dehydrator. If you cannot dehydrate lunch meat. You, jerky. I think you could. Jerky. I think you could. Jerky, exactly. That's a good one. You could do jerky pork rinds even. That'll oh. give you a little bit of an energy boost. Have you ever been to uh, the, I think it's the Time and Space Museum, Place and Time? In um in Washington, D.C.? Yeah, Place and Time Museum. It's the Smithsonian Air and Space? Yes. It is fantastic. The Smithsonian is a free public resource to the members of the United States of America. And if you're ever in D.C., may I highly suggest checking out the Smithsonian? All of them. They're all fantastically curated with such amazing information to offer. I'm not even joking right now, guys. I refuse to make jokes about the Smithsonian because they do such a great job. So so I think we should get drunk and go to that gift shop. Because <sighs> so they have the the astronaut food, the, the ice cream sandwiches. We would never make it because Smithsonians are so big. 
you're walking, you're sweating, you're enjoying. <laughs> you're like, oh my God, look over here, look over here, look over here. It's so overstimulating. Oh my God, that's a place that's I would, fun. they'd have to rescue me from air, uh, airlifted. <laughs> They're like, so you're in a museum. I'm like, I'm tired. Like, did you ever see that video of the lady who got airlifted and she just started spinning like crazy? Do you remember? That, we, she was on, uh, she was on a board, right? She was on a board, probably a school board. They probably, they probably dislocated her neck. Yeah. Oh my God. They did not do a good job of that. No, they didn't. Well, Mission can, unaccomplished. What can you do? She wasn't going to make it out in the wilderness anyway. So might as well just at least try to get her out of there. True. Listen, I'm no medical professional, but I am a dreamer. And a dreamer dreams a lot. And that's all I have to say about that. Get out of the water and onto the dock. You're not going to believe what I just heard. Welcome back <sighs> to Gossip Talk. Ooh. I'm ready to talk some shit and spill some tea, y'all. Come on now. Yeah, this is the part of the show where you can submit your tea or your gossip and we can read it on the show. You can go to campcounselorspodcast.com or email us at campcounselorspod at gmail.com and we might potentially read it on the show yeah. depending on the workload. But this one I read and it stuck out to me and I was really obsessed with it. So it's a little bit of a longer one, okay. but I like the payoff. All right. Strap in, everybody. I've been a camper since day one at Camp Shady Birch. Love that. However, this is my first letter. I was inspired to write in for your new segment, Bitches in the Braids. Do you remember you said that a couple weeks ago? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's what you were going to do because I hairstylist. Yes, because this is a hairstylist. And you know what I said? Like I said a couple episodes ago, you guys, a couple episodes ago, hairstylists have the most drama. They're constantly hearing and like talking about people's beef. So they have a story to tell. And this one is amazing. I have been a hairstylist for nine years. And boy, are people comfortable sharing their tea. I'm here for it, though. You're here to relax, honey, and it gives me an interesting conversation. Let's rewind to my first year as an assistant at a small salon. I was still in school and was learning the trade. In addition to technical skills, it was my job to greet and get to know each client that came in the door. There was one stylist, Tracy, who had a male client, let's call him Charles, who was a very prestigious lawyer in town in his early 50s. He was fairly unremarkable as a client, but would always be polite to me. That's the worst way to be described. Unremarkable. He was, yeah. Oh, my God. He was fairly unremarkable. Wait. He was divorced with two kids who were preteens. Okay. Fast forward to months later and Tracy gets a new client. Mm. Let's call her Kristen. Kristen was absolutely stunning. Tall, blonde, perfect skin, and in her mid-twenties. Girl, she's got it all. She moved to town for her job, which she took so that she could move in with her boyfriend. Tracy asked how she found us, and she said, My boyfriend Charles goes to you. Quite the age difference, but good for them, I guess. Kristen tells us that they've been together for about a year, that they were both divorced, and that they met online. They had decided to take their relationship to the next level by her moving in. Mm. Okay, so Charles is the unremarkable lawyer. Kristen is the hot bombshell that just moved into town to move in with um, Charles because they work together. Yeah. Kristen was in the salon every six weeks and Charles every four. A few months go by and Kristen comes in absolutely beaming. Look, we're engaged, she said, as she shows her absolutely amazing diamond on a finger. I'm so happy. Kristen and Charles decided to get married at the end of the year. Once the date was set, Kristen booked her hair and makeup trial, as well as booked the salon for her and her bridesmaids. As the time grew closer to the wedding, Kristen was noticeably nervous. Mm -hmm. I think, I think Charles doesn't love me anymore, she said quietly. She told us he was distant, always working or at the gym, and how he seemed to take less interest in her. He's probably just stressed, we assured her. He'd be crazy not to be in love with you. They're really supportive. It's like he doesn't even care about the wedding, and it's only a few months away, she said with tears in her eyes. I grabbed her a tissue. Straight men are useless with that stuff, I told her. Yeah, guys never help with the weddings. They're so annoying, chimed in Tracy. <laughs> I bet he thinks every girl wants to plan a wedding. He doesn't realize it's a full-time job. It's our job to make her feel beautiful and listen to her, even if her fiancé didn't. First of all, this camper is amazing. That's like an amazing, it is, it like, I feel like there is a little bit of responsibility and it's not fair that a hairstylist have to take on as like being like kind of like therapist to the yeah, clients. 100%. And I think it's really annoying when men don't take in the responsibility for like straight relationships a part of the wedding because it's a lot of work and I think a lot of men just get to show up while the girls become bridezillas and just do the entire thing. Like yeah. it's insane. Also, is this... 
is this camper Colleen Hoover? Because she's writing it exquisitely. I'm I'm into this. Listen, it's a novel I'm obsessed. We have we're only halfway through. Okay, chapter next chapter. Next chapter. Maybe a week or two later, a new client, probably in her mid thirties, comes to Tracy looking to change up her color. Do you have any pictures for inspiration? asked Tracy. New girl pulls up a phone to show us the color and style she likes. Only, she doesn't show us a picture from Pinterest or Instagram. She pulls up an old picture of herself at a wedding. It zoomed in adjusts her face and hair. She and Tracy discuss the cut and color and come up with a plan. New girl compliments me on my blue hair and mentions that her workplace is fairly conservative. Otherwise, she would venture into more bold looks. What do you do for a job? I ask. I'm an attorney, she says. Girl. She commiserates with us about the long hours, stress, and lack of work-life balance. Luckily, my boyfriend understands. He's a lawyer, too. No. Then she pulls out her phone, still on the picture she showed us, and zoomed out to show us her embracing none other than Charles. What the fuck, Chuck? Isn't he cute, she giggles. Oh, wow, we exclaimed. Yeah, she replies, (laughs) like a schoolgirl. I know it sounds cheesy. I know it sounds cheesy. But he's my person. I can see this movie scene in my head where they're like, oh, wow. And like the girls are looking at each other and this other girl's just in the seat, like kicking her legs. Like, yeah, he's a dreamboat. And they're like, "Mm -hmm." After about damn near dropping the stack of foils and avoiding all eye contact with Tracy, I ask her how long they've been together. She explains it's technically five years, but they'd only say four because he technically hadn't filed for a divorce from his last wife his last wife yet but he was going to wait so five years already minus one year from a previous girl so this is like at least three girls yeah i think at one point he was with two and then like traded out when he left his like ex-wife he added chris into the mix who moved in Mm. she split her time between where we were and california and was apparently gone for a lot of the time here she was, young, ambitious, successful, and cute, and her boyfriend of five years had the audacity to be leading a double life with not only her, but another perfect 10 of a woman. I'm not sure what happened, but less than a month before the wedding, Kristen called to cancel her bridal trial on the day of her wedding. At her next appointment, we brought her tissues, gave her wine, and just let her vent. She kicked that dumbass to the curb, but not before making him move her into a luxury brownstone since she moved to a new city to be with him. Good for her. No idea what happened to the other girl, but last I saw, Charles was balding. So we call that karma. <laughs> Love you guys. Spill the tea in cabin three. Wow. Charles is an asshole. Charles sucks. I Chuck know. Chuck sucks. Uh, Chuck sucks, but I'm glad that Kristen got a brownstone out of it. But poor Kristen. Yeah. She was excited. I know. You know, I'm going to say there's a lot of good attorneys, a lot of good lawyers. A lot of not so good narcissistic ones. I don't know. This guy sounds like a complete narcissist. How are you going to have? I just don't understand how people you work so much. How can you juggle things and live a double life? That seems so exhausting. I know. Listen, you can never trust a lawyer, but you can always trust a hairstylist. (sighs) Grab your bug juice and bear spray campers. It's time to pack it up and take a hike. Welcome back to Take a Hike. This is the part of the show where we bitch a little. We tell something to take a hike. My take a hike is Chuck. I'm just kidding. Um, No, but he can take a hike. But my take a hike is those variety packs of chips. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, the multi-pack boxes by Lay's. Yes. Or someone else, Uts, is the one that I'm referring to because that's the one that we had on the bachelor party. I like the chip selection for the most part. The one that they stuff the most in there are the plain chips. Why the fuck are there only six of the party snacks, which are my favorite ones, where it comes with, like, it's basically like like the, the pub mix. Yeah. And then there's 10 of the plain chips. I don't want a plain chip. Well, your first problem here was choosing Uts. Why well, didn't choose that? Uts is, Uts is the grandmother of the snacking industry. Like, she's there... She's holding on for dear life, but we're not sure how much longer we're going to have her. She owns the pretzel rods. I don't know. What about rose gold? Rose gold? No. Rose gold? It's It's not gold. Rose Rose, Rose, Royce. Who was it? Royce Royce Clean. 
No. It's something gold. Something gold. They have the skinnier sure, ones that are shaped like a normal pretzel. Pretzel rods are owned by us. And then if you want to talk the Big Daddy sourdough pretzels, that's definitely going to be a Schneider. I've Yeah, they do. But I've never seen you purchase an Uts pretzel. So it's nice to give them that like crown. But like... No one cares about the crown if no one's going to eat the crown. But I will say, I really, really fuck with the party, the party mix. Yeah. I, oh my God. This is so, Michael, April's husband, he, I told him when we all got there, I was like, I really like these ones. And everyone was like nonchalant and like didn't care about any of them. So the next day I go down and there was supposed to be like six in there. They were the rarest breed. Okay. I, and there's none to be found. I'm digging in there. I'm digging. I'm digging like a little gerbil looking for like something in the corner of the cage. <laughs> and I'm like, who the fuck ate all of these? I called dibs on them, but I can't be, you know, this, it's not my show. It's not my party. You know, I know. at like the, the last day we're cleaning up after I fell down the fucking stairs, <laughs> Michael had hid all of the things for me. And he said, I put them up here so nobody would take them. And I was the tallest person, so I could like I was the only one who could see them. So I I have one left downstairs, and he gave them to me after I fell down. Oh, the well, that's stairs. a nice little treat for after you yeah, fell. Yeah, and I will say those are really good. And so it's like a party mix you look at, and you're like, that looks weird. The pretzels off. Why is it that color? I'm not sure how I feel about a plain tortilla chip mixed in with all those other things. Is that a peanut? Did that somehow fall in the batch, or is that a button from a worker's shirt? <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's actually really good. So I'm, I'm, um, I'm probably gonna eat it on the way to the um hosp- hospital airport tomorrow. God, knock on wood. I'm not trying to manifest that, but um, but yeah, I just I think if they're gonna do a variety pack, have more higher numbers of the stuff that I personally like. Well, let's talk about the other variety pack that I think everyone's seen before. The Lay's. Yeah. What do you think? You know what's a, you know what the the real ugly duckling of that pack is. Um, let's walk through the flavors. What have we got in the it's bag? It's the Fritos. Yeah. Why are there six? There don't. There does not need to be six of those. If you have a bowl of Fritos out and there's nothing else on the table and there's a big, big bowl of sour cream and onion dip and you go, oh my God, fuck, I hate Fritos, but my only option. And then you have one. You're quickly reminded that Fritos aren't that bad, but there's something weird about a Frito that you never actually want to eat one. It's hydrogenated oil, I believe. It's a corn chip. So it's a corn chip, what? but I can, but I'm saying like you can taste the at least I my very sensitive palate. Yeah, you are. That's why I quit smoking. Um, so it's the menu really, once. I saw the menu yesterday. <laughs> Great movie, by the way. Um, but yeah, I think it's I, for me. I can taste the oil in it. I can taste the oil in a Cape Cod chip, and that's why I enjoy them so much. Mm. I like that taste. The Fritos are really good in walking tacos. Oh, they they basically invented the walking taco. Yeah, I don't think I've had a walking taco with any other chip. The barbecue twist Fritos mm-hmm. are in the, they're in the league of their own. Okay, Madonna. I used to. <laughs> <laughs> they're the Madonna of chips. It's actually, they're actually like Garth Brooks' favorite mm. chip. They are because he used to be advertised on the outside of it. And remember when he was, I feel like I've this talked about your, this in the podcast. This I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But I'm just saying, I'm just going to say it because he tried to come up with his own thing like title. It was like Spotify where he didn't want his music out there for anybody. He was, he was like Prince. And he was like, no one can get my music. You have to download whatever fucking weird app that he had. And it had like a code on the inside of all the chips. And I was led to believe that Garth Brooks invented the little, the honey barbecue twists. Oh, well, I don't know about that. Can I ask a question about Garth Brooks without being... Okay. Okay. I don't want to be stoned here. I don't think I know a Garth Brooks song. Do I? I got friends in low places. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, you know that one. It's a karaoke classic. Yeah, that is... I care you. I didn't grow up on Garthy. On Garth. I grew up on Garfield. Oh. That's my lo- Gar. I'm taking the grave. He's my second favorite animated cat. All this to say, we were talking about chips. We keep saying all this to say, because that's how we just really need to fucking reset how we skated so far away. Stop putting the crazy, plain, boring, stupid flavors in the packs and just give us the fun, zesty ones. Also, when we had those, we're on um, Kira's bachelorette trip, and this was a bachelor trip. It's a hit on a trip, that's for sure. That's for sure. It is. So what are you telling to take a hike? You know what? What? (laughs) You know what I really hate? What do you really, really hate? I'm doing some crowd work, y'all. I hate, hate, hate when the delivery driver comes up and starts phoning a friend, 
knocking at the door, tapping the window. The best thing that came out of COVID was contactless delivery. Yeah. And as a society, as a nation, COVID ended. It's no longer a national emergency, but this is an emergency. I need this to continue on. I don't want to speak to my delivery drivers. I tip really well and I always click leave, leave at door. Leave at door. Take a photo. If it gets stolen and you took a photo of it, that's not on you. You took a photo of it. Like you're good. And I feel bad because sometimes I've heard from I've heard from the staff, I've heard from the first responders at DoorDash that they are required to call sometimes. But I don't know if that's true because sometimes the guys they show up and they drop it and they go. And I love that because I am so weird. What do I say? Who am I to this person? I'm embarrassed. Yeah, sometimes you like you don't know. Are they leaning in for like a hug? Yeah, I I typically go with a fist pound, and then I give them a water bottle, and I say it's hot out there, and they're like it's March. <laughs> I don't know what they want from me, and I'm in, I'm always just it's so mortifying to grab yeah. your food from them. It's also almost embarrassing. Like, it's do embarrassing. I do I invite them in? You say like, hey, you there's enough for both of us. You want to come on in? Oh, we always order enough food for a couple of extra people because I like to have leftovers. I just I want them to know that it's okay to leave it. Mm. So I don't know who to talk to about this. I have been writing letter <clears throat> on pen to paper every morning, pen to paper, pen to paper, and I'm licking these I'm licking these envelopes, I put my stamps, <laughs> and I'm I'm staying in DoorDash, and I'm and I'm calling my I'm calling my local government, and I'm doing everything I can to get these delivery drivers to stop calling me when they get to the house. Can we talk about? The pictures that they take. I wish we would. They're scary. I look like a <laughs> goblin. There's one picture. There's one picture that they took. So for those of y'all who don't know what we're talking about, I feel like everybody probably does. But when they drop off the food from like DoorDash or Uber Eats or something, just like to confirm that it has been dropped off, you they will take a picture and then be on their merry way, usually if they're leaving it at a doorstep. Back when you were living in Massachusetts, I remember, I still have it on my phone. I'm going to have to find it. If I can, I'm going to put it in here. I screenshotted it because it was a picture of you. It looked like a Bigfoot picture. <laughs> like you like running away from the guy holding the bag. And I'm sure he was just like, hey, I have to take a picture of that. I love when I share my fears with you mm. and you turn them into a bit. This is, it's not a bit. It, this, it's a safe space. <laughs> okay. And that's. What it is. Um, I did see a TikTok where a DoorDash driver dropped off a sandwich at like a medical office, gave it to the employee, and then she reported it as never been delivered. So she got an instant refund and he got put on suspension. So you know what he did? What? He went into that office recording, made her come out and answer why she would do that. She's like, I don't know how that happened. He was like, do you know how many buttons you have to? And I know because I've been missing this for and I reported it. And it's like, it's it's always the restaurant's fault. They'll forget to put like the side of fries in there. And then DoorDash sends you a credit. Like I would never lie and say the driver didn't give me the food. That's someone's livelihood. Sir, I was going to say, you can't fuck with someone's money that's like what that. She was, that's what he was saying. And she was like all defensive. And at the end, she was like, I'm really sorry. I just... I don't know why I did it. Uh, and I'm like, girl, you're in scrubs right now. Okay. So she, she did it. She admitted to it. She made, and he had it on camera, so I'm sure he's okay. But I was like, that girl better watch her back. I could ride in the smelliest Uber of my life. And I just, I, I won't give anything less than five stars. I, it's people's livelihood. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you can't mess with that. I just don't want them to mess with my personal time and make me go out there and shake their hand. Yeah. Like I'm Mr. Mayor. Yeah, they do love to tap on our window. They're like rat a tat tat. Rat a tat tat on your dum dum drum. Be so hard, gonna make me gum gum gum. Um, so all that to say is That's gonna be our little wrap up there. Do you think the new counselor likes the top bunk or the bottom bunk? Over. Either way, I'm giving them my boondoggle kitchen. Over. Welcome back to Camper Crush of the week. Who am I giving my friendship bracelet to at the Eras Tour? Mm. I'm loving seeing those videos. Those are super fun. Taylor Nation. Taylor Nation. <laughs> this is the part of the show, guys, where we tell you who we're crushing on, who we're loving on, who we want to snog if you're over across the pond. Jonathan, who are you loving this week that you want to share with Camp Shady Birch? All of our beautiful, gorgeous, stunning, amazing campers who we fucking love so much. If you're listening, I love you. You're my crush of the week, <laughs> but I have another one. And anyway, Jonathan, who is yours? So it's not a who, but he. it's a what. <gasps> who, what, when, where, why? Over this bachelor trip, y'all, 
I was using koozie after goddamn koozie. And I'm not talking about like the flat foldable ones that are made out of like basically felt. I'm talking about the ones that are like thick as a fucking pool noodle, even bigger than a pool noodle, kind of kind of a hard to hold. They make my hand look like a little doll's hand because it's so big next to my hand. There's no condensation dripping on my hand. I'm sitting at the beach with a crisp cold beer and there's of course like a planter's NASCAR thing on the side of it. When I'm putting it up to my nose, it's old and it smells like an ashtray. And I don't know why it smells like that, but I fucking love it. A koozie. That is my crush of the week. Who, who, brought, who brought the koozie? They were at the house. Oh, house communal. had no linens. Koozie Aplenty. I was literally just going to say Koozie Aplenty. Koozie Aplenty. Wait, that would be a good episode title. Koozie mm, Aplenty. Yeah. And they were, they had a weird collection. And they all, I really like the ones that are like the 1980s, like the teal. And there's always like a little splash of yellow. There's definitely a magenta or like a bright pink. Like how cool. We bought Mark and Gab that, a cooler that looked like that. I forget what the brand was, but something along those, along those lines I love in a cool. Do you have a koozie. picture of this specific I'm I'm really at a loss for imagination here um, of what that style of Cousiana looks like because a traditional Cousiana has that foldable felt and you're talking about a stiffer, a yeah. stiffer koozie and I'm, I'm racking, it's, I'm racking like it's a It's like ball. the shape, it doesn't collapse. It's like older, they're like from the 80s did and you part, probably did you earlier. Have, take a picture of yours? Um. Oh God, it, I'm sure it's somewhere. We're if not, to share I'll, that find, on the YouTube. I'll find a, a picture. Um, but yeah, we were all using them on the beach and it wasn't the collapsible ones. It was the really, really old ones. They're like foamy. I don't know how to explain. They float in a pool. I've never thrown one in a pool, but I can assume they float in a pool. It's almost like, you know, a kickboard, what a kickboard is made out of. I've never heard that term in my life before. A kick. Oh, you'd, you'd never learned how to swim. The way you attack me on this episode again and again. I'm not attacking. Girl. I need a bulletproof vest to get through this one. <laughs> well, maybe if you had one made out of Why are you crying? Because I feel attacked. It's not an attack. No, I'm just crying because I have allergies. Ever heard of that? <laughs> Want to attack that next? Well, no, it's but a it, kickboard. A the, kickboard. It's like a tiny little board that you lean on and you and you kick. A boogie a, board? No, no. It's it's quite smaller than that. Like it's it's. The bigger foam ones. than yeah, it's a foam one. I know what you're talking. I, I get it. I've grasped. I've grasped what it is. I it's was the size asking of a bread a box. Photo. That was all I was asked. A bread box. Is it bigger or smaller than a bread box? That's what I'm saying. It's like around the size of a bread box. It's not. <laughs> Why is that always? Me and Jonathan on every road trip doing that game. Is it bigger or smaller than a bread box? You guys know we're talking about it when you play Twenty Questions. It's always for some reason the older ones are always like, "Is your object bigger than a bread box?" It's like no one's had a bread box in 45 years. Yeah, I've never had one to date. Bring them back. Bring them back. Yeah, let's bring them back. But actually, let's bring those koozies back. Oh, my goodness. I'm winded. So, what are you crushing on? No, I love that. I'm, I'm obsessed with koozie aplenty. Um, <laughs> I'm crushing on a person. Okay. You're supposed to do the 20 questions. Boy or girl? Or are they a boy or girl? We're not playing the game right. My <laughs> crush of the week is BB Rexa. Oh, come on, BB. BB. Okay. It's kind of a sad crush of the week. Why? Because BB's so sad. Why is she? S I just want BB to get her flowers. Is she depressed? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, I don't know if she's depressed. She just, I don't think she's respected in the industry. Okay. There's a, there was a very famous TikTok that was made in fall of last year, 2022. And a girl basically like put a green screen up behind her and was like a picture of BB and was like, I could see this woman on the street and not recognize her. Like, who is BB Rexa? And she duetted it. She's over like a million likes on it. And I just think BB has contributed so much to music. And I think she still really struggles with her identity in some circles. But like, I love BB. I know BB. Me and BB are girls. We're mutuals on TikTok and that's about it. But I really, like, I just think it was really, like, sad. Like, she, like, is duetting this video and someone's like, I would never know this woman. That's fucked up. It is. She has 45 million monthly listeners. Yeah, shut up. So, I did a little deep dive, you guys. Are you well, going to school us on BB? Welcome to BB 101. The Rexa <laughs> experience. The Rex experience. Stop. I know. We're clever. <laughs> <laughs> this is incredible. Okay, okay. Before you get into this, BB Rexa, we love BB. She's respected here. We're going to see if she can headline this summer at our 
um, summer jamboree at our summer jamboree sponsored by the Scholastic Book Fair. Yeah, so make sure you bring your dollar bills because it's expensive to get into this one. Yeah, it is. So this earlier, so the reason why this is all coming coming to a head is in, tw- in like the beginning of May this month, she was on the Zach Sang YouTube show. Zach Sang, you're a huge fan of him I for am. sure. Um, and she said, <laughs> "quote If I was to stand on Hollywood Boulevard and ask people, hey, do you know who BB Rex is? I feel like a lot of people would not know they're actually talking to me." But if I were to play my songs for them, they would know the songs. But it's been a really long journey. Yeah. So she's definitely having a little bit of like yeah. identity crisis. And I was looking up a lot of this. Like, why do people not know BB? Like, what is it? And this this um, Australian dude who I like love who like does all these like, great like music stories or whatever. She, he said this like really interesting thought about her. Like her career started off as like, a dance track feature which a lot of like european artists do but like in america apparently like, we like our musicians with a finished product we want an era we want a storyline we want an album we want a full concept mm-hmm. we're in like the uk and australia and in like europe and everything they're okay with like the one hit wonders like i'm sorry rita ora in america like she'll never be that girl but she's that girl in the uk okay so that's the bb rexa is an american woman but she kind of took that like European and a kind of approach to her career. She was like, it's really frustrating, but it's also nice to know that I make bank and I'm still able to go to the bank and not be noticed. Okay, but is that then, is her crisis like, I don't want to twist this on its head by using the E word, but like, is it, is it like an ego thing where she wants to have the recognition and all that stuff? Because if people know her songs and she's doing it for the art, I this is starting to sound like I'm shitting on her, but I'm I'm really not trying to. I'm just curious. I, I think it's crazy. I don't think it's an ego thing. I think if you have multiple songs over a billion streams and you feel like people don't recognize you, that's kind of crazy. So for people to, it, it's kind of like this like dog pile joke on her now being like, I would never recognize that one if I saw her. And I just think it's mean. I think it's it, really mean. I agree. I think it's mean. I also, is she, does she like go hard on music videos? Because I know she has the one with Nicki Minaj, which is my favorite song by her. But that's really the only music, and she did a Dolly Parton song. And those are really the only two music videos that I've seen from her. Versus like Charlie XCX, who who I love and I know that is putting out like a bunch of things featuring her very like front facing. She's like, it's me, it's it's Charlie Love, you know, things like that. Like really branding herself to her music. Yeah, it's just, it's been a tricky pass for her. So she started off in in the music industry, like already kind of getting the shaft. She was a writer for a lot of people and would like sing on tracks and literally never get credits. Oh. Like it happened so often as an interview for her crying, being like, and they didn't add me in the video. They didn't credit me at all. Oh. Okay, so she wrote Monster, Eminem featuring Rihanna. I'm friends with the monster that's on my bed. They took her off the song. They put Rihanna in it. But she's still in the song. Ooh, 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 ooh. You know those oohs in the and background? she's not credited. That's her. Because Rihanna couldn't hit those notes. Hmm. Um, she is the pre-chorus of Hey Mama by Nicki Minaj. Hey Mama. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's like the Hey Mama, Mama, Hey. But that's the whole song. She's not credited. She wasn't allowed to be credited because there's too many people on the song already, like Calvin Harris or whatever. She she literally saw like on her like Instagram, they were shooting the video and was like, and they were like, sorry, it's a close set. Wouldn't even let her show up to the video to be in the video. Uh, that and she said that that experience hurt her oh, deeply. That's oh my god. I can't imagine like really having like big names like that and just getting shafted. And if you're thinking to yourself, like, okay, like what BB Rex songs do I know? Okay, ready? If it's meant to be, it'll be, it'll be, baby, if it's meant to be. That is over a billion streams on Spotify alone. We're not talking about Apple Music or YouTube, okay? A billion on there. Okay, um, In the Name of Love. In the Name of Love. It's that, I think it's that like, that, like, ooh. I don't know if I know that You one. do. It's like a big, like, club song. Like, do, 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 do. She does have a lot of uh, club bangers. Um, Me, Myself, and I with G-Eazy. Yeah. It don't mean myself and I. Right. Solo ride until I die. All that to say is, guys, those are all songs that are reaching, or if, if, a, like, at a billion or right at a billion. And she just is really struggling with her. I don't know. Just give her her flowers. I just really love her. And I just really want her to be recognized. Rexignized. Rexignized. Okay. So in Camp Shady Birch, we are BB Rexa stands. All this to say is, do not, do <laughs> not shit on BB here. What song's been sucking your head all week? 
Welcome to Camp Songs. Hey, girlies. Welcome back. Turn up your stereo. It's time for Camp Songs. I've never heard that character that you just unlocked. Yeah, she was shy. It felt like a collector's edition. <laughs> that was, guys, that was, I can't believe I'm Collectors hearing that for the first time and you guys are yeah, hearing that for the first time. we experienced it all together. She's, How exciting. Yeah, that was really exciting. So Camp Songs, y'all, this is the part of the show where, oh, something weird before we get into this. Camp songs, we talk about the songs that have been stuck in our head all week. I compile all of them onto Spotify as well as YouTube. We got an email and it looked suspicious. Like I thought it was a fake thing and it said it was from Spotify. I checked the email and it said it was from Spotify.com and it said that we had um some sort of like removal notice on a playlist and i didn't want to click the link but so. it had something to do with the camp songs playlist because now i'll have to go in and edit it but everything like the details that were written in it and the photo cover is like stripped from it i don't know if somebody reported it because there's so many people there's like over a thousand people now that listen to it maybe somebody reported it by accident or reported it somehow but they took i thought the playlist was gone forever and I went back and it's it's still there and the link still works. But we just got another notification today about some like the cover photo being taken down and I can't put the all it was was a photo of like the summer camp. I know. You know who it was? What? It was our camp rivals. Camp Brownwater. Boo. Boo. Camp Brownwater. Camp Brownwater has been Camp Shady Birch's arch rivals for 700 years since this camp was enacted. <laughs> Is that a word? I think so. Well, Camp Brownwater, we're on to you. How's your playlist doing? It's yeah. all banjo and tears. Anyways, this is the part of the show where we talk about music that we love, that we think you should love as well. We compile it on the YouTube t- um, playlist and Spotify. Spotify if it play- fucking survives. Okay, that was aggressive. Maybe it was Garth Brooks. You know who it wasn't? BB Rexa. Yeah. My camp song of the week is Last Hurrah by BB Rexa. I'm going to spare you more BB talk because it's been a lot of BB talk this whole episode. <laughs> um, that was a joke. <laughs> enough. <laughs> enough BB talk. Oh, okay, yeah. I'll do one more note for you. Okay, please do. Please do. This is my last hurrah. Not blah, blah. I really don't know a lot of the words, but I do know the vibes are high. <laughs> yes. And it's going to be a fun song that kind of just kind of goes on. I love that the kind of song that just keeps going and it just doesn't stop. Kind of like BB. Taylor's she just version. Just keeps going. Um, we love you, BB, and I love Last Hurrah. I can't talk about BB Rex anymore. I'm going to make myself sick. Jonathan. Yes. Who? What? Who? When? <laughs> okay. Again, mine is going to be real quick. Um, fuck the coordination. I'm talking Taylor Nation, baby. <laughs> Because my song, my camp song, if you will, is Miss Americana and the Heartbreak Prince. Okay. By Taylor Swift. And for some reason in my head, I know that she had her documentary, which I haven't seen, and it's called Miss Americana. But why are you giving me that look? Have you not seen a documentary? I don't know. But um, (laughs) but I feel like this song had gotten like the bottom of the barrel for some reason. Because Lover is like not everybody's favorite. It's not my favorite. Lover. And that's the the song is off of that album, but it's such a good song. And it, she's been opening with that, so I'm like, oh, okay. So it's not a it's not a B side. Everybody does know this song, and it's a really good song. If you don't know it, you need to know it. Miss Americana and the Heartbreak Breeze. I love Taylor Swift. <laughs> Point blank. Period. I'm a big Taylor head. Yeah. I've been a Taylor Swifty head for my whole life. That's Just actually not true. Swifty. I used to be such a Taylor hater. You were. I'm whispering because do you guys remember when that whole thing happened with Kanye and Kim, and she said something about Kanye, and then ta- and then Kim like leaked the voicemails of of Taylor Swift approving like the, her her likeness in the video. Yeah. Do you remember that? I was like, Taylor, you fucking snake. I was a part of you the were a part of the reputation, but I, you know what it was. I it, gave you reputation. I gave you reputation. It You're wasn't welcome. that she she allowed her likeness to be in the video. It was the line about her. I I listen. I know where I went wrong. Hmm. I have I have literally apologized at the altar of Taylor Nation. Dragged me over the coals. Hit me across the face 
I'll do anything to get a ticket to that Sigalos era tour. I'm obsessed with it. I think it's the coolest concert tour I've ever seen online in my entire life. I think Taylor is a force, an icon, a beautiful human being, and her music will live the test of time. And I'm sorry I was not a Taylor head earlier. Hands down, pants down. It's like, at least you came around and you can like recognize your wrongdoing. I myself have been a Swifty for many years. I didn't call myself a Swifty and I wasn't part of the fandom, but every single album that's really come out like before Evermore, I have nothing against Evermore. That's just kind of the part of my life where I got so busy. I was just doing things. I was too busy to listen to it, but I went back and I revisited with you and it's a really good album. What's your favorite album? Oh God, mm. I don't. Mm, mm. I would say probably because it's reminiscent of of the good old days. Probably Speak Now. So you're really excited about the Speak Now redo? Yeah. Oh my God. When she announced it, I was so excited. I wet my plants. Oh, you wet your plants. We love a monstera joke. Who's your um? What's your your album? Evermore. I, 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 I <laughs> that was pretty. I really liked. Uh, Midnight's and I know it's not everybody's favorite no, and I it like, just is I, like recent but like that was a good one. Midnight's is great but I'm a, I'm an Evermore girly. I love a sad song. You know Milana girly. That's her most Lana-esque album. Yeah, Folklore. Willow and Champagne Problems off of Evermore changed my life. Hmm. How do you feel about um, her debut album self-titled Taylor Swift? It's just gay. You're gay. <laughs> Scary stories around the campfire. Welcome back to Scary Stories Around the Campfire, everybody. I want you to feel spooky and ooky and dooky all at the same time. <laughs> oh, leave that to Camp Brownwater. <laughs> All right, so this is the part of the show where you guys write in scary stories that's either embarrassing or scary. You look like you're 10. <laughs> okay, so. You've been so, sitting here for an hour and 20 minutes. I'm getting I'm getting itchy. <laughs> you're getting itchy. I have a bruise on my ass. Yes, and he won't let any of us forget it. Don't no, you No, this worry. is my personality type. It is. Until something else exciting Wait pops till we're on a five-hour flight tomorrow while your ass is black and blue. It is. Listen, I need a donut to sit on. He's like, can I have a ginger ale and an ice pack, please? <laughs> She's like, what's the ice pack for him? Like, I fell down the stairs. He said it's going to look like he got a BBL. Because <laughs> he's going to have to sit on the ground. <laughs> My BB Rexa L. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. Stop. Oh, right. Just get to the point Stop. of the story. Stop. Uh, okay, so all this to say. <laughs> This is an ADD episode. Hey, I've been off my medication for the longest I've been off medication in my entire life. Do you feel freaky or creepy? Yes. Okay. Hey there. I work as a behavioral <laughs> therapist. God, we could fucking use that. Um, and I serve children ages 2 to 12 with developmental disabilities. Most of my days I'm getting screamed at or chairs thrown at me, but something happened that really scared me and my boss. Mm. I was providing therapy to a child. When he got up from his nap, he looked me dead in the eyes with a blank face and said, my mom is picking me up early today. It's freaky. I like the voice choice you used. Thank you. That's like how that has to be how this child said it. He's a really smart kid and overhears his mom talking about plans. So I figured he probably just overheard her and his dad talking on the way that morning. So I told my boss. My boss told me they hadn't heard anything and they would look out for t uh, calls or texts from the mom. We go about the rest of our day and eventually the kid forgets about the whole interaction. About an hour later, we get a frantic call from the mom saying she'll be there in 20 minutes to pick him up and he'll need all of his personal belongings because he'll be out for the rest of the week. <sighs> As it turns out, there was a family emergency in which he needed to be picked up early and no one knew about prior. Sincerely. Would rather be having a chair thrown at her in cabin 22. I feel like for um, confidentiality reasons, it wasn't discussed why the child was taken out. But I do believe it was a death in the family. And this kid predicted it. A premonition, if you will. Kids are fucking scary like that. I used to babysit this girl and she had an invisible friend. And like weird things would happen. I didn't think it was like superstitious or even like a little stitious. But I... She said it was her imaginary friend named Laika. And I was like, that's such a specific name. That's really weird. That's a really specific name. And yeah. the way that she would like really blame things, she would get like frustrated and like teary eyed and be like, it wasn't me. It was Laika. And I'm like, so one time I was babysitting her and she was like, Laika wants to come over to play. And I was like, um, maybe she could play for a little bit and you guys can just like do your thing over here and she can stay over here. 
and I'm not going to bother her over here, but y'all can stay over there. You know, I don't want to piss off any like any any child demons. Well, this so this story, the so she works as a teacher and then the kid like basically says something that she writes off as like, oh, they didn't tell us yet. And then the mom called and she was like in a panic and an emergency. So it sounds like a premonition. It sounds like the kid can speak to the afterworld. The afterlife. The afterlife. Did you ever have, have any imaginary parents? Um, no, I respect uh, everyone that's a ghost in the room. I don't speak to them. They don't speak to me. But I do believe in that energy. I have just chosen to separate myself for a place of positivity and light. Mm. Does that make sense? It makes complete sense. And I think the more you talk about it, the more energy you lend it. So we can stop talking about it now. <laughs> good plan thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of cam counselors with zachary porter and jonathan carson if you want bonus content you can go to patreon.com slash camp counselors you can go to our website camp counselors podcast.com you can write in with all of your gossip docs if you have a confession if you need advice we haven't done a little bit of advice in a minute so um if you've got something you need advice on send it on in and until next time lights, lights out campers, campers.